Hey everybody, um, Mr. Uh, Fetters, if you want to take us out of the practice session. Uh, for everybody, we're going to begin the meeting shortly. Uh, just as a reminder to everyone, uh, the microphones are turned off. When you're ready to speak, uh, please turn the microphone on, bring it close to your uh, mouth, so that way it helps with picking up with the sound for the video recording and the Zoom uh, live streaming. Uh, Mr. Fetters, do we have anybody logging in? Yeah, people are coming okay. in. Uh, Dr. Morthy, we do have some participants slotted in through Zoom. We are ready to begin the meeting, whatever you are. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Bleeker. <clears throat> All right. This meeting of the Model Board of Education is open to members of the public to be physically present. Members of the public that attend will be asked to follow the same procedures as all other visitors to our schools. Those procedures can be found on the agenda page of our website. Additionally, the board meeting will be live streamed for viewing purposes only. Anyone wishing to view the meeting may do so via Zoom. The webinar ID for this meeting is 859-9174-7414. And the required password is 326530. All right, Mr. Bleeker. Mr. Gallo. Here. Mr. Kismarski. Here. Dr. Park. Here. Ms. Sagone. Mr. Copeland. Here. Ms. Dabnero. Here. Mr. De Silva. Here. Mr. Denise. Here. And Dr. Morthy. Here. Adequate notice of agenda of this meeting has been provided to the Ridgewood News and the Record specifying that the Mawa Board of Education will meet on March 23rd, 2022 in the Administrative Offices, 60 Ridge Road, Mawa, New Jersey. A copy was filed with the Township Clerk. Salute to the flag. Dr. Park, did you lead us? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. we will have our executive session at the end of this meeting. Agenda questions. Please limit your questions at this time to resolutions under new business on this agenda. As a matter of fairness, you are asked to limit your questions to no more than one and your remarks to no longer than three minutes. If you are here representing a group, please identify yourself, the group, and your position in the group. If you are here as an individual, please give us your name and address. This section of public participation will be limited to 15 minutes. Please specify the resolution you are referring to in your question. Motion to open the meeting to the public. Mr. De Silva, second by Mr. Coplin. Okay, motion to close our meeting to the public. Mr. Kizmarski and second by Mr. Gallo. Uh, we go to superintendent's report, Dr. DeToro. Thank you, Kurt. Thank you very much. Um, I have two quick things to, to celebrate in, that took place in our schools. We had the robotics team compete two weekends ago up in Mount, uh, down in Mount Olive, and they ranked sixth out of 37 teams advancing to the semifinals um, in the playoffs. Congratulations to the robotics team. It is a huge accomplishment. So we're very proud of our robotics team. Um, the next piece of celebration is up on the screen. Um, this is a club that uh, we had a couple years back prior to COVID that we have high school students going to the Mawa Library to work with our elementary students. It's called the Homework Club. And as you can see, the older students are enjoying it just as much as the younger students. So it's a great connection that our older students have with our younger students. It gives a little bit of academic support and also a connection to the students who are uh, in the upper grades as well as the lower grades. So we wanted to showcase some of um, the pictures here. Ms. Kaczynski is, the, one, is the, the head of this committee, and she does a great job with our high school students. So thank you, Ms. Kaczynski, as well as our high school students. <laughs> and she's a class of 93, right? Put that in. I don't know if she wanted you to put that out there, but okay. <laughs> and I echoed that, so I apologize. Um, this is a state mandate reporting 
um, to the board and the community, specific to the student safety uh, data system. As you can see up uh, on the screen, it's we are expected to do this twice a year. Um, this is for reporting period July 1 of 20, um, oh, I'm sorry, it's 2022 to December 31st of 2022. I'm sorry, 2021. I'm sorry, it's 2022 now. Um, the next slide. Perfect. Um, as you can see, uh, there are various uh, categories in which we have to report. Those reporting categories are specific to each school as well. The total numbers are up on the screen. Uh, so I'm gonna give you a, uh, a minute to look at those. If you can go to the next slide. Um, this is another piece of the obligation from the state, but actually it's just good practice. So as you can see in the, the previous screen, there are a number of different indicators for our um, student safety data system reporting um, that range from violence, vandalism, substance abuse, weapons, um, HIV, and other. Um, for the school, it's our obligation to continue to educate our staff as well as our students. So making sure that we're putting the best foot, foot forward, as well as making sure that our students are equipped with the right information the right, to make the right decisions. As you can see in the first column of trainings, um, the school district as well as the schools individually took part in a number of trainings to make sure that we're solidifying those practices and those understandings, as well as taking part in various programs. When you look at the trainings, those trainings range from the police, the police department coming in in the beginning of the year and training our, our teachers on various aspects of <coughs> school safety. Um, the school safety team, which is housed at each school, um, took part in training with our uh, district attorney, Mark um, Zetimer, came in and talked to us about HIV, not only um, how to identify and work through the process, but also taking a look at various case law to understand what the different parameters were, what the different protocols are, what to do and what, to, what not to do. So we felt like that was really valuable uh, time spent with our school safety teams at the district level that we were able to take part not only in the training, but we were able to look at various cases that we have uh, to make sure that we're all in lockstep across the district and, and really solidified in our practice. The programs that you see on the right uh, range school to school. Um, but those, um, obviously we have 39 up there, but they range on a number of different levels, going from week of respect, various SEL activities, spirit days, team building days, all different opportunities to bring our school together, to have our students really grow as a unit and understand and appreciate each other's differences, as, as well as really build the bonds across different grade levels um, and across different classes. So those are the different programs. And as we all know, those types of programs the hope of those programs is really to decrease the negative behavior and increase the connection that they have not only with each other but with the school itself. Any questions? Uh, thank you, Dr. Jatora. Um, thank you, Mr. Gallo, for getting the lights. Um, now we move on to Board Secretary's report, uh, Mr. Bleeker. Start discussion on the 2022-2023 budget presentation. Thank you, Mr. Bleeker. Okay. Good evening, everybody. Um, so first off, I want to say uh, thank you very much for uh, the accommodation that we had to make with moving the meeting that was originally scheduled from next week to this week to stay in line with some of the budget timelines that we need to submit. Uh, once again, as I said before, there was a little bit of a delay getting our state aid figures this year uh, due to a change uh, in Trenton as far as when they were released. But uh, we finally do have them, and with that, uh, we can complete and go through with the presentation of the preliminary budget. Uh, for this, for the 22-23 school year. Uh, first, I want to go over a calendar of what tonight's um, discussion will focus on, as well as the next two meetings. So tonight, we're going to review uh, the revenue sources, tax impact, enrollment, debt service, and special revenue portions of the budget. Uh, at our next meeting on April 20th, special education, benefits, personnel, operations, and capital projects. And then May 4th will be a summary uh, of the previous presentations as well as the adoption 
of the final 22-23 budget. Uh, to recap for anybody that doesn't recall from previous years, at this time on the board agenda, there's a resolution to approve the preliminary budget. This budget will go down to the county office. They'll conduct a review at their level, provide any feedback to us, and then on May 4th, we'll have the adoption of the final budget, inclusive of any comments that they may or may not have. And at any time between now and then, if there are adjustments that we feel are um, necessary enough to incorporate, we can also incorporate them, and we'll discuss those in detail on May 4th as well. So for the first slide, 2022-23 uh, revenue, um, we've identified uh, five different areas, excuse me, six different areas of revenue within the budget. Uh, the first and largest is our tax levy. The tax levy for next year of approximately $68.5 million. This is across both operating and debt service. I'll talk a little bit more about um, debt service in a little bit. It represents an increase of approximately 1.12% from the prior year. Uh, in the past several years, this is one of the lowest that we've had. And I'll talk a little bit about the two driving factors for why um, that is uh, so low, kind of in comparison with other recent years. State aid of a little bit over $4 million. This represents state aid that we get directly from the state, as well as a budget number for potential extraordinary that may, we may receive at the end of the 22-23 year for any extraordinary special aid costs that we might have. Uh, it does represent an increase of 13.7%, 78% from, from the prior year. Other revenue uh, within the operating budget, we have interest, miscellaneous revenue, rental income. Also a portion of this is funds that we get for uh, SEMI. SEMI is the Special Education Medicaid Initiative. For uh, We do receive a small reimbursement every year for students who are special ed as well as Medicaid eligible. Uh, we have fund balance, fund balance of 2,353. This represents unexpended funds from the 2021 year for both operating and debt service, as well as unassigned balance from the year. It is reduced by about $670,000 from the prior year. This is something that we discussed uh, within the finance committee, uh, pretty strategic that where we fund balance had been in past years, we wanted to bring it in, bring it lower a little bit to make sure it's something that we felt comfortable maintaining for years going forward. Um, very happy with uh, that number and being able to potentially maintain that for years going forward uh, with the hopes of decreasing it a little bit uh, as well to get to a, a comfortable number. For special revenue, uh, federal and state grants that we receive, 691250 And again, I'll speak to that in a little bit more detail later on. And then lastly, capital reserve withdrawal. Uh, we are budgeting in the 22-23 year, a withdrawal from capital reserve of $3.2 million. That's going to represent doing HVAC renovation work at both uh, Betsy Ross and um, George Washington Elementary Schools. Uh, all that being said, a grand total budget for the 22-23 year of just over $79 million, 79091523. Now to dive a little bit deeper into the tax impact and what a uh, $68.5 million budget means when we're talking taxes for the taxpayers of MAWA. And we're going to switch gears a little bit. Uh, the previous slide spoke about the 22-23 fiscal year going from July through June 30th. Uh, when I talk about tax impact, now we have to switch gears to speaking about a calendar year as opposed to fiscal year. So um, that being said, there's a couple of other, other variables in addition to the projected tax increase that comes into play here. The first one is the net valuation taxable. Uh, this, has, in essence, uh, can be described as the overall value of the township, um, businesses, residential, commercial. Uh, for 2022, and I, I want to thank the um, tax assessor over at Town Hall. He helped me with uh, providing some of these numbers. 2022 uh, net valuation taxable, $5,786,000,000. It's an increase of about $11.5 million over the prior year. Average value of a home for MAWA for the 2022 year is $478,179. It's an increase of about $866. And both these numbers are important, especially the net valuation taxable, because as the tax base increases throughout the township, that gives us a larger base for the um, $68.5 million that we have to be spread over amongst. So the larger that base is, the more we can spread it over, the lower it is for um, uh, each taxpayer, because there's a larger base to spread that money over. 
Going down to the last uh, bullet point, last section here is the tax impact. So for every $100,000 that a home is valued for the year 2022, uh, the school tax represents $1,178 of that $100,000. Um, represents a $16.80 increase from the prior year. And then if we talk about that in terms of the average value of a home, a 478, uh, it is a, for school taxes, just for the school, uh, $5,632, which is an $80.33 increase from the prior year. As I said before, we had a um, unusually low overall tax levy for this year of the 1.12% projected. There's two main drivers of that. One is a decrease in debt service, um, and I'll talk about that in just a little while. We have two bonds currently outstanding. Those are ending, and as we're paying those down, the debt, the principal and interest payments on those are less each year. And because those are uh, funded directly by the taxpayers, each year we pay a little bit less. That's um, less of a tax impact for the, uh, for the taxpayers in terms of debt service. And the other is Public Law 2020, Chapter 44. Uh, this was a law that was enacted in 2020. What it did for our district and for all districts throughout the state, um, it changed the health care plans that were available, uh, med medical and prescription plans for any new staff entering the health care system, any current staff were grandfathered, any staff that might have been in state health benefits and moving from one district to another were grandfathered, but anybody brand new coming into the system, um, there were uh, fewer options available to them. And the intent of that law was to take those savings from employees that may have been in a richer plan, putting them into uh, this uh, uh, lesser plan. That savings is to go back to the taxpayers in the form of tax relief. For MAWA, what that tax relief represents is um, a reduced tax levy of $207,106. The way the state had us calculate this was um, we many times talk about a 2% increase, 2% increase, 2% on our tax levy. Uh, what they did for us or what they had us do was take our 21-22 base, reduce that by the $207,000, and then add the 2% on top of that uh, or any increase on top of that lower base. Um, I do have an asterisk on the bottom here. I, it is uh, definitely worth mentioning that this calculation um, across the state because this is brand new this is the first year it's ever been done and we only learned of what that um, overall amount would be just two weeks ago uh, it is being challenged across the state by some um, uh, school districts and is currently being reviewed so we are in conversation with the county business <laughs> in conversation with our colleagues uh, there may be a change in that two hundred seven thousand dollars so I want to make sure I mentioned it now uh, worst case scenario, and I do not anticipate this happening, if that $207,000 went completely away, it would be a difference of $1.80 for every $100,000. Um, again, I don't anticipate that happening, but with it being under review, that number may change slightly, and, and of course we'll talk more about that in a future presentation if it does. So, next topic is enrollment, and I wanted to pull the, the most recent data we have for this. For February 2022, because this is another driver, we definitely look at enrollment projections for next year. Um, what the 12th grade class that's going out in, the average kindergarten class that we may get coming in, what that means for our um, enrollment that uh, plays into staffing, order supplies as well. For grades pre-K through five, we have an enrollment right now of 1,214 students. Um, for grades six through eight, 649. And for grades nine through 12, 872. And these are students that are uh, go to Mawa schools, one of the six Mawa schools. We have some out-of-district students as well, approximately 62 right now that attend out-of-district um, uh, schools. And then we have about 44 uh, high school age, nine through 12 students that attend one of the various county schools, whether it's uh, Burke County Academies, uh, with their VOTEC program, or any of the other programs that they have. Okay, debt <laughs> service. Uh, debt service, as I mentioned before, is a portion of the budget that is fully funded by the taxpayers. Um, it's utilized for the payment of principal and interest payments on any bonds that were a result of referendums that were previously presented to, um, to the township and the residents of the township voted and approved on. Uh, as I said, we have two bonds outstanding for the 22-23 school year. Uh, those two bonds, we're going to make two payments on each of them. 
Those four payments represent a total of just over a million dollars in principal payments and $44,883 in interest payments. Uh, grand total for the next school year of $1,119,883. And again, as I said, each year that number is coming down less and less as we make payments on those bonds. Uh, a little bit more detail on those two bonds. The first one is from 2002. It was initially issued for $12,545,000 and was refinanced in 2009 and 2020 to take advantage of decreases um, in interest rates where we were able to refinance and achieve a savings for the taxpayers. Uh, it was for the construction of Lenape Meadows Elementary School as well as renov renovations at the high school in the Ridge. And this school year in 2023, we'll be making the last principal interest payments uh, on those bonds. They'll expire this year, and afterwards we'll only have one remaining. Uh, and that one bond that we'll have remaining after this, after next school year will be the 2003 bond that we issued for $9,522,000. Uh, it also was refinanced in 2011 to take advantage of low interest rates. That bond was originally for additions and renovations at the high school and the Grand Pool Ridge Middle School, and we have the last principal in interest payment on that bond coming up in the 23-24 school year. Okay, special revenue. Uh, special revenue, we also refer to as Fund 20. These are funds that we receive from any federal governments, state governments, uh, or local entities. So local grants for the MSF, we discussed that at our last meeting, uh, are accounted for here. Uh, Non-public grants, so those are grants that we receive from the state of New Jersey, uh, where we are the pass-through to go to uh, some of the non-public schools in our township, uh, Young World Day School, Apple Montessori School. We have IDEA that represents and we utilize to help offset the cost of out-of-district tuitions. And then we have ESSA. ESSA is Every Student Succeeds Act. Those are funds um, allocated for the different titles that are located <coughs> under that. That program helps support our um, Title I summer school program that we have, and we also use money from that for professional development as well, and um, some uh, Title III purposes, which is for uh, ESL and immigrant students. For going into the numbers of these different uh, areas, for the federal, IDA and ESSA, we have $675,400. Uh, for the state non-public that I discussed, approximately 15850 and we do partner providing some of those funds to the non-publics with Bergen County Special Services. Uh, this gives a total anticipated for the 22-23 year of $691,250. Uh, you may see um, not shown on here are any of the ARA and ESSER funds that we have received. Um, because those are one-time payments, one-time adjustments, we don't have that uh, included here, but they definitely are accounted within this fund, within Fund 20. And I wanted to take a moment and also touch on strategic planning of the budget. Um, strategic planning um, really had a great impact and was definitely something that helped guide us through the budget process. Uh, during the 22-23 budget process, administration regularly revisited the goals of the strategic plan to ensure that the programs and initiatives within the budget were aligned with these goals and, if appropriate, were funded accordingly. Uh, we're going to talk a lot more at our next meeting on April 20th about some of the more specific uh, programs. Um, that we're looking to fund that do directly align with our strategic goals. But for tonight being a summary of the revenue, tax impact, and other areas, um, there's no direct um, link to strategic goals, but rest assured there will be plenty to talk about at the April 20th meeting. And with that, we're going to conclude um, where I began as far as just the calendar and a review. Um, next meeting, we're gonna speak some more about special education uh, benefits that are available to our staff. Uh, personnel, operations, and capital projects. And we have a summary and adoption on May 4th. <clears throat> Any questions from the board? Okay, thank you everyone. Yes, uh, uh, Thank you very much, Mr. Bleeker. Uh, we move on to our assistant superintendent's report. Dr. Fair? report for us this evening? Of course I do. Thank so, you. Um, good evening. Um, let me just touch on a few things that are on the agenda. Um, agenda item 17U, you'll see that we have the update of the LEA plan for safe return. That was also shared through the board packet. Um, but it's, it's, a, it's a 
It's a big shift, but it's small language change in terms of it speaks to our shift to mask optional, as well as um, it articulates our discontinuation of contact tracing, which has been communicated um, to our school community. That will be posted on our website, um, the updated version, tomorrow morning. Second piece I just want to highlight, uh, you'll see that we have our summer teaching staff, teachers, and paraprofessionals for most of our summer, summer programs have been hired. They're on tonight's agenda uh, for your approval. Uh, we will have our extended school year and our camp invention programs fully staffed on our April 20th agenda. So um, we plan on having all of those programs for the summer um, fully hired for um, by next uh, board agenda, which is uh, very exciting. Our next piece, kindergarten registration, we've already communicated, uh, obviously, with um, the entire community, but also shared with the board that um, our annual centralized kindergarten experience will be taking place tomorrow at uh, the Cube. Um, if you'd like to come by and come visit, that would be great. But it's going to be an awesome opportunity for our new families to meet building leadership, meet main office staff, ask any questions related to uh, their new school. So we're, again, really excited and um, really happy uh, to meet our, our new folks. We, it's, it's also the season of retirement, right? So we have two uh, retirements listed on tonight's agenda. Uh, one is a, f a fairly recent retirement. So the retirement letter is at your places. Um, it wasn't necessarily listed in the board packet for you. So um, 18A highlights uh, Diana DiLeonardo. She's a paraprofessional at George Washington School. Um, she's been a dedicated member of GW for nearly 20 years. And um, you may know Diana as a smiling face as you enter GW. So um, when I mention that, people are like, oh, that's Diana. Uh, while her role has been the main office support, she has always gone above and beyond to connect with all students in the school, whether at lunch and recess, in passing in the hallways, or at time serving in classrooms. Diana is a dear friend and colleague to everyone who works at George Washington School. Her positive attitude and willingness to learn and help will truly be missed. We wish her warm winters and time to relax with her husband as they both retire to Florida in the coming months. Our second retirement is uh, Joanne Zamorski uh, as a special education teacher at Lenape Meadows School. Um, Joanne has served as a special education teacher um, for the past 22 years uh, in district. Uh, you'll see in the letter in front of you, uh, she states uh, in her um, declaration of retirement, quote, my greatest achievement has been giving my students the gift of reading and the joy of learning. Not only has Joanne served as an advocate for all learners, she has served as an expert in literacy and as a teacher leader. At the district, uh, as the district already knows, Mrs. Zamorski was also the instructor through Fairleigh Dickinson University where she worked with a cohort of our teachers over the course of um, the last, uh, over the course of two years uh, for our teachers to obtain their Orrin Gillingham certifications. Um, for those of you who don't know um, what Orrin Gillingham is, it's a multi-sensory phonics technique uh, for reading instruction that's been really valuable and celebrated in our district to help our students. Um, Joanne will be missed for her kindness and care and she leaves us with the reminder that the attention to reading and literacy is critical for all students across the school district. We wish her great happiness in the years ahead in her retirement, uh, but we're really happy for her and we're proud of her work here. And that's my report. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much, Dr. Fair. Um, all right, we move on to my report. Um, so, uh, first thing, um, a board member uh, made a request for creation of an ad hoc committee to review and provide updates to um, the Board of Education regarding transportation in our district. Um, after a careful review, um, I supported this idea and I will be creating an ad hoc committee um, to look into uh, transportation in this district. Um, we need two additional members to serve on this committee. Um, so uh, please let me know if you have any interest. Um, and this will be in addition to Mr. Copland, who will be chairing this 
committee in this endeavor, and Mr. Gallo um, in his role as chair of finance and facilities, who I have asked to be on this committee as well. Um, if you're interested, let give me and you know, let me know in the next week or so or two. Um, also, given that the administration is currently looking at a replacement for Ms. Joan Scatino, who um, announced her retirement, um, the committee will um, wait. Uh, to resume meetings um, once a new person is hired and voted on by the Board of Ed. So, um, and then we look forward to upcoming reports from this committee to the board uh, in general as needed. Okay, thank you very much. Um, all right, bear with me on the second one. I just thought it would be helpful for us to review our district policy on public participation during board meetings. Um, this is the one I refer to as um, policy 0167, um, and that comes up during the end of our meeting during public comment. Um, I'm going to ask you to bear with me as I actually read the policy, um, just so everyone, just kind of a gentle reminder. The Board of Education recognizes the value of public comment on educational issues and the importance of allowing members of the public to express themselves on school matters of community interest. In order to permit the fair and orderly expression of such comment, the board shall provide a period for public comment at every regularly scheduled meeting of the board. Public participation shall be permitted at the discretion of the presiding officer. Public participation shall be extended to residents of this district, persons having a legitimate interest in the actions of this board, persons representing groups in the community or school district representatives of firms eligible to bid on materials or services solicited by the board, and employees and pupils of this district, except when the issue addressed by the participant is subject to remediation by an alternate method provided for in policies or contracts of this board. Public participation shall be governed by the following rules. Again, uh, loosely, but we like to know what these rules are, just a reminder. Number one, a participant must be recognized by the presiding officer and must preface comments by an announcement of his or her name, place of residence, and group affiliation, if appropriate. Number two, each statement made by a participant should be limited to three minutes in duration. Number three, no participant may speak more than once on the same topic until all others who wish to speak on that topic have been heard. Number four, all statements shall be directed to the presiding officer. No participant may address or question board members individually. And presiding officer, sir, in this, in this particular policy is myself, just to clarify. The, and number five, the presiding officer may interrupt, warn, or terminate a participant's statement when the statement is too lengthy, abusive, obscene, or irrelevant. Request any individual to leave the meeting when that person does not observe reasonable decorum. Request the assistance of law enforcement officers in the removal of a disorderly person when that person's conduct interferes with the orderly progress of the meeting. Call for a recess or an adjournment to another time when the lack of public decorum so interferes with the orderly conduct of the meeting as to warrant such action. And waive any of these rules when necessary for the protection of privacy or the efficient administration of the board's business. Thank you very much. If you ever want to refer to this, this is on our website, correct, Mr. Bleeker? Um, all right, so anyway, just a quick reminder. Thank you for indulging me. Um, all right, a few other things which are more exciting than po the policy is uh, we have Mama Mia at Mawa High School. Mamma Mia, oh, tickets on sale now. Um, this is Thursday, the 31st of March to Sunday, April 3rd uh, for the general public. Uh, they do do a, a nice special show on the 30th uh, for the senior citizens, which is, I think, always appreciated. Um, Mala High School is also proud to announce that one of our students um, Ishita Jane has been named a National Merit Scholarship <coughs> finalist. Um, this is being named as a member of the top 15,000 students from a pool of 1.5 million juniors who took the PSAT in 2020. 
Um, so, congratulations to her on this wonderful achievement. Um, next, we have um, a sports person, Kayla Menicola, um, who is only a sophomore, I understand, um, and is blowing out um, our, you know, our basketball uh, team. Um, she is the Bergen Record Female Athlete of the Week. She averaged 17.3 points and 5.3 rebounds in three wins, including a championship victory in the BIT final. Can someone tell me what BIT stands for? Mr. Kismarski? Bergen, Bergen Invitational Tournament. Bergen Invitational Tournament final. All right, well, congrats. Thank you. Congratulations to Kayla. Very proud of her achievement. Um, all right, now we also have, uh, starting tomorrow, it's over Friday, uh, Frozen Junior at Ramapo Ridge Middle School um, coming up this weekend, so get your tickets now. Again, Friday the 25th to Sunday, March 27th. What's that? That's where I'm going to tomorrow. <laughs> Dr. DeToro, if you'd like to see him, will be going tomorrow. Senior show, okay, is the, tomorrow on Thursday. Are, are you in that category to be attending the senior <laughs> show? Just checking. Okay. Um, and last but not least, uh, congratulations to our fellow board member, uh, Linda Zacone, on becoming a grandmother again. Um, congrats, her daughter had uh, another daughter uh, the, and named Sadie. So congrats to her and uh, glad mom and baby are doing well. Okay, that's all I've got. Let's go on to board committee reports. Mr. Coughlin. I'm going to keep mine short since my other ones the last couple of days were on the longer side. Um, Holly and Porum were celebrating since our last meeting, so I just want to wish everyone uh, who celebrated, hopefully everyone had a nice holiday. Um, between now and our next meeting, we have a Good Friday, Easter, and Passover. Uh, they'll all be celebrating between now and then, and I just want to wish everyone a happy holidays. Um, Dr. Morthy talked about the musicals. My daughter's in Mamma Mia, so please come out and support the cast. They've been working very, very hard, and apparently they're working all weekend. So, um, yeah, I think we're, she's going to be there literally all weekend. So please come out and support the play, uh, the musical. Um, April is National Scottish American Month and National Volunteer Month. I say it all the time. There are plenty of opportunities for all residents in town to step up and volunteer. Uh, there's a, a quote that I like, is that uh, volunteers may not have the time, but they do have the heart. So please step up, raise your hand when the, when the call is uh, sent out, um, and help out your community any way you can. And just want to wish everyone a very wonderful and restful spring break. Thanks. Thank you very much, Mr. Coughlin. Any other board committee reports? Mr. Gallo. I, I just want to, uh, I'm with that microphone, but I'll speak a little more loudly. Kyle, uh, I want to thank the, uh, Kyle and his staff for the, uh, for the fans at home. <clears throat> Mr. Thank you. I just want to thank Kyle and his staff and everyone in the district who worked on putting together um, the 22-23 budget. Um, I think the overall, um, sort of the broad, stroke message is that the budget continues to fund our programs, the excellent programs we have in town. Um, we're making tweaks along the lines of the strategic plan, as Kyle um, mentioned. We'll be hearing more of that in the budget narrative coming up. Um, but essentially, the taxpayers um, have made very wise investments on our students that have been effective at advancing uh, student achievement uh, for many years, and we will continue to, doing, to, to do that in the coming years ahead. And at a relatively small tax increase of just over one point some odd percent. So uh, we thank, obviously, the community for their support of our schools, but I think that the, um, that the citizens of our town are getting good value for what they're investing in. And we have excellent programs for our students, and we will be continuing that uh, for the foreseeable future. So I want to thank everybody who contributed to the process. But um, you know, the good times will keep rolling at a relatively low cost. So that's the takeaway. Thank you. Uh, thank you very, very much, Mr. Gallo. Um, I will give a report on instruction and curriculum and special ed meeting. We met. Um, this is our March meeting. Um, so first thing uh, we talked about was Parent Academy. 
um, and the partnership with the Hackensack Meridian Health. Um, that's that six part wellness series I think I mentioned before. Um, and that videos of that uh, are posted on our website as they happen. Um, there's another going to be another Parent Academy uh, webinar presentation uh, regarding our dual enrollment and university partnerships program. Um, this is going to be uh, from our Director of Guidance, uh, Dominic Liotta, um, and that will be March 29th for Rampo Ridge Middle School and Mawa High School. This will be virtual, but it's to provide information on those programs. Um, <laughs> Yes. Okay, and um, we also have curriculum writing that is actually um, some on this agenda. Um, and there's um, going to be, there's seven different standards uh, that need to be implemented. Um, and we have two years for completion given the pandemic. So these are in various areas, including visual performance arts, theater, media, computer science, design, etc. cetera. Um, there's also, um, uh, the elementary schools have um, a uh, concept that we're doing is called one book, one school, one district. Um, and this is K through third where all the students read the same book um, and they actually read this um, book with parent involvement and parent support. Um, the book is Stella Diaz Has Something to Say um, by Angela Dominguez. Um, every student receives a book at no cost to them, and then there's different activities on the calendar, um, and there is parent support in reading the story with their kids, um, or they read in Morning Circle, etc. Uh, the story is about an ESL student who struggles with speaking to her peers. She's Mexican American with a single parent, born in Mexico, moves to the U.S., um, and then she finds herself here. Um, she does find her identity, um, so that's very exciting. Um, and that's all I have for instruction and curriculum. Um, anybody else? Mr. Denise? Uh, the policy, policy committee. Policy committee met on Monday to continue our review of the 6,000 series. Um, we also have um, seven policies and regulations on tonight's agenda for a first meeting. Uh, these are all from that 6,000 series that we've been reviewing. No substantial changes, just really minor language changes, uh, format changes. So uh, nothing substantial. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Denise. Um, all right, uh, any other board member remarks, additional comments? Okay, old business. Um, minutes? Uh, we have a recommendation to approve the minutes from the March 9th meeting. Uh, I need a motion, Dr. Park, and second, Mr. Coughlin. Mr. Bleeker? Mr. Gallo? Yes. Mr. Kismarski? Yes. Dr. Park? Yes. Mr. Coughlin? Yes. <clears throat> Ms. Davidero? Yes. Mr. De Silva? Abstain. Mr. Denise? Yes. Dr. Morton? Yes. Okay, now let's go on to new business. Um, we're looking at new business A through V. Asterisk. V, v plus asterisk. We have V plus asterisk. No, I. Do we have oh, V plus asterisk? Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll call that W. W. <laughs> All right, so new business under A through W, uh, W being the asterisk, just to clarify. All right, do I have a, a motion on Mr. Kismarski, second by Mr. Gallo? Any discussion? I, I just wanted to thank um, publicly the Mala Schools Foundation. Um, that is on their uh, Q, item Q. Uh, that they have provided uh, the Board of Education in their winter 2022 grants in the aggregate amount of $61,848.32. So we thank them very much uh, for their continuing support um, and generous donation. Um, anyone else? Okay. Let's take a vote. Mr. Gallo. 
Yes, except on 17A, I'm abstaining on check 106157 and on check 106079. Thank you. Mr. Kizmarski? Yes. Dr. Park? Yes. Mr. Copeland? Yes, I know, but I'm abstaining on check number 106092. Thank you. Ms. Davenero? Yes. Mr. De Silva? Yes. Mr. Denise? Yes. Dr. Morthy? Yes. <clears throat> Let's take new business now. Um, this is personnel from A through V. That's correct. No asterisks on this one. All right. Uh, yes, Mr. Denise? And um, second by Mr. Kizmarski. Do we have any comments? Okay, Mr. Bleeker. Mr. Gallo. Yes. Mr. Kizmarski. Yes. Dr. Park. Yes. Mr. Copeland. Yes. Ms. Davnero. Yes. Mr. De Silva. Yes. Mr. Denise. Yes. And Dr. Morthy. Yes. All right, now we're going to uh, public questions or comment. Public participation at board meetings is in accordance with bylaw I read, 0167. At this time, members of the public may ask questions or make a comment on educational issues or school matters of community interest. As a matter of fairness, you are asked to limit your questions to no more than one and your remarks to no longer than three minutes. If you are here representing a group, please identify yourself, the group, and your position in the group. If you are here as an individual, please provide your name and address. This section of public participation will be limited to 15 minutes. Do I have an motion to open to the public? Mr. De Silva, second by Mr. Gallo. A motion to close to the meeting. Uh, close our meeting to the public. Mr. Kizmarski, second by Mr. Gallo. We will. Uh, recess at this time to executive session, so I need a motion to do that. Mr. Copeland, second by Mr. Denise, um, and at, at which point we will adjourn from our executive session. Thank you, everyone. Have a good night and have a very enjoyable spring break. Bring your bring your Mr. Feathers, we may uh, end the meeting for those who participate remotely. See how Thank you.